Hi there, I am Miss Lawrence and this is my online social studies classroom. In this video, I'll be conducting a read aloud of Christopher Columbus's letter written in 1493 announcing his 1492 discovery. The version that I will be reading was adapted by the New Zella, or perhaps New Zealand, staff published on March 28, 2017. Primary sources. Columbus's letter announcing his discovery 1493. Editor's note, this letter was written by Christopher Columbus to Luis de Santangel, the finance minister of King Ferdinand II of Spain. Santangel was in charge of the money in the treasury of King Ferdinand and was the person who convinced King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella to pay for Columbus's trip in 1492. This letter is the first known document announcing the results of the first voyage of Columbus that set out in 1492 and reached the Americas. The letter was written on February 15, 1493, aboard the ship Nina on the return trip back to Europe. He arrived in Lisbon, Portugal on March 4, 1493. The letter was probably then sent to San Tang Hill at the Spanish court of King Ferdinand. The letter helped to spread the news of Columbus's voyage throughout Europe. In the letter, Columbus claimed to have discovered and taken control of a series of islands in the Indian Ocean in Asia, but he was wrong, for he had landed on the Caribbean island of the Americas. He described the island, particularly Hispaniola, Haiti and the Dominican Republic today, and Juana, Cuba today, exaggerating their size and wealth in gold and suggesting that mainland China was close nearby. He felt the indigenous people that he called Indians were peaceful and willing to convert to Catholicism. I found islands inhabited by more men than I could count. Our undertaking have attained success. I know that it would be pleasing to you to read of everything done and discovered on our voyage. On the 33rd day after I departed from Cadiz, Spain, I came to the Indian Sea where I found many islands inhabited by more men than I could count. I loudly claimed these islands for our most fortunate king with flags flying and no one objecting. To the first of these, called Guanahani by the Indians, I gave the name of the Blessed Savior for it was he who helped me reach these islands. Each one of the others I call Santa Maria, Fernandina, Isabella, Juana, Cuba today, and so on with the rest. I proceeded along the coast of Juana towards the west. I found it so large that I believe it is not an island but the country of Cathay, China today. I saw no towns or cities on the sea coast. There were some villages and small farms and the people ran off as soon as we approached. Wana is surrounded by many very safe and wide harbors, like no other that I have seen. Many great, fresh, and healthy rivers flow through it, and also many very high mountains are there. All these islands are very beautiful and full of great variety of trees stretching up to the stars. Their leaves, I believe, are never shed. Some of them were blossoming and others were bearing fruit. The nightingale and the other birds were singing in the month of November. On the island of Juana, there are seven or eight kinds of palm trees, which are taller and more beautiful than those in Spain. There are also pine trees, wide plains and meadows, a variety of birds, a variety of honey, and a variety of metals, but not iron. There is no difference in the appearance of the people. In the one which was called Hispaniola, Haiti and the Dominican Republic today, there are great and beautiful mountains, wide fields, groves, and plains for farming, where houses can be built. The natural harbors in this island and the remarkable number of clear and healthful rivers exceed belief. The trees, pastures, and fruit of this island differ greatly from those of Juan. Hispaniola have different kinds of spices, and there is gold and different metals. As I said above, there is no iron, and they are also without weapons. They have simple ways, are trustworthy, and quick to offer us anything they possess. They even invite us to ask for things. 
They show greater love for all others than for themselves. They give valuable things and are satisfied with very little in return. However, I did not allow things of no value to be given to them, such as pieces of plates, dishes, and glass. But I believe if they were able to obtain these, it seemed to them like getting the most beautiful jewels in the world. In all these islands, there is no difference in appearance of the people. Their ways and language are the same, and they all understand each other. This is a fact. I'm sure that this is very important to our most important king, which makes them ready to become members of the holy religion of Christ. In all these islands, as I have understood, each man is content with only one wife, but the princes or kings are permitted to have 20. The women appear to work more than the men. I was not able to find out surely whether they have individual property, for I saw that one man had the duty to serve food and refreshments to others. Truly great and wonderful is the holy Christian religion of our king and queen, for God's divine will have rewarded our human efforts. God does listen to his servants who love his commandments, even when facing impossible situations. But we have achieved what no mortal men have done. These things that have been done are thus briefly related. Farewell. Christopher Columbus, Admiral of the Ocean Fleet. Thank you for visiting my online classroom. If you found this video helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and then share it with anyone you believe this video might help.